Hi, I'm Sue Jackson of the Book by Book blog, and welcome to Big Book Summer 2023. I wait all year for this, and so do a lot of other people. Um, the Big Book Summer Challenge is a reading challenge that I host every year during the summer, of course, or winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. It works either way. This is a reading challenge that is super easygoing and relaxed, just like summer. You set your own goals, whether that's reading one big book or two or a whole stack like I've got here. Um, you set your own goals and you've got all summer to do it. And a big book for the challenge just means any book with 400 or more pages. Everything counts. Audiobooks, ebooks, YA, middle grade, graphic novels, whatever you like to read, fiction, nonfiction, it all counts. Um, for ebooks and audiobooks, just look up online how many pages the print edition has. And if it's 400 or more, it's a big book. And you've got the whole summer to do it. So, you could participate in this challenge by just reading one 400 page book in the next three months. It's easy. Anyone can do it and everyone is welcome. You may have noticed I've got some big book summer swag. Um, last year was the 10th anniversary of the challenge. So I created some, some fun things that um, you can pick up to help celebrate big book summer. I'll link to my Zazzle shop down below, and um, there you can find mugs, t-shirts, tote bags, um, notebooks, stickers. I also got this nice car magnet, which I've been sporting all year round. So this challenge has really turned into a much anticipated event for a lot of people. So I'll tell you a little bit about how Big Book Summer came to be. Way back in 2011, um, my I was a member of two different book groups, but they both took a break during the summer. And I found myself starting the summer with nothing that I had to read for book group and shelves and shelves of books waiting to be read as usual. And I decided that summer, I called it the summer of the big book. And I decided myself to tackle a few of these books that I'd been meaning to read for ages. Um, I think I started by rereading um, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. It might have been about the time the movie came out. I don't know why I was rereading it, but that would make sense. And from there, I, I picked out some other big books that I've been sort of very much wanting to read, but sort of uh, procrastinating on because they were so big. Um, one of those was The Passage by Justin Cronin, which was fabulous. The whole trilogy is just amazing. And he's got a new trilogy coming out this summer. So um, I haven't checked the page count, but I'm guessing it would count as a big book. And I finally tackled in that summer of 2011, um, The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett which I'd been dying to read. Everyone kept telling me it was so great. And I just never seemed to have the time for it. That one's over a thousand pages. That was a really big one. So that first summer worked really well for me. I had a great time. Summer is just the perfect time to be a little more relaxed about your reading, um, to tackle some of these bigger books when you've got a little more time maybe or at least fewer obligations and more vacation time. And so the next year in 2012, I turned it into a reading challenge that other people could join. And from then, the rest of it is history. This is now the 11th year of the Big Book Summer Challenge. And every year we get more and more people who are just, and then they come back the following year because they're so excited to do it again. When I went to Booktopia, that book event in Vermont a few weeks ago, everyone kept coming up to me and saying, when does Big Book Summer start? So um, I'm thrilled that it's turned into such an event and that so many people enjoy it. 
and I hope you will join in the fun too. So just a few um, details. As I said, any book 400 or more pages counts, any format, any genre, any type. You set your own goals, whether that's just one big book or however many you'd like to read this summer. This year, um, it's, it's based on some American holidays. It begins the beginning of Memorial Day weekend, which is like the unofficial start of summer here in the US. And it ends on the Monday of Labor Day, which is the unofficial end of summer. So this year, those dates are, um, I'm actually starting it a day early. My cousin and her husband are visiting this weekend, Memorial Day weekend. So I'm going to launch things on Thursday, May 25th. That's when this video will go live. And the challenge will run all the way through to Monday, September 4th. So you've got lots of time to tackle a big book or however many you want. So how do you join in the fun? It's very simple. If you are a booktuber or have a blog, you put together some kind of kickoff video or blog post. Um, nothing fancy, just a few minutes will do the trick. You can talk about the exact book big books that you want to read this summer or big book. Um, or you can just say, I'm going to participate and choose your books as you go along. Like I said, super easy going. You can even include your announcement for big book summer as part of one of your other videos or blog posts. The only thing I ask is that you please include a link back to my blog, which is the official sign up page. I will include that below. If you do put up a video to participate in Big Book Summer, just link it up on that um, blog page and you're participating. For those people who don't have a blog or a YouTube channel, that's fine. Again, easy going. Any reader is welcome to join the Big Book Summer Challenge. Every year I set up a Goodreads group for the challenge. Whether you have a blog or YouTube channel or not, you are welcome to join the Goodreads group. It's a lot of fun. We talk books there, big books, all summer long. It's great for getting ideas of, of what to read, to see what everyone else is reading. If you don't have a YouTube channel or a blog, you just sign up in the Goodreads group. If you're not on Goodreads, you can still join. Just go to my blog and leave a comment. Um, down below on the challenge sign up page. So anyone can join. It's open to everyone. If you like, you can post um, updates, progress reports, or book reviews during the summer, but you don't have to. Um, and most people do also post some kind of a wrap up video or blog post to say what they ended up reading for Big Book Summer. So that's it. It's very simple. If you're wondering what to read for Big Book Summer, um, I just shopped my own shelves this week and found more than enough books to keep me busy all summer. If you're looking for ideas of big books, I do have um, a curated list, big book list on um, Bookshop, and I will link to that down below too, where you can get some ideas. These are all big books that I have read either for previous Big Book Summer challenges um, or throughout the year. And at the end of the summer, to even add more to the fun, I will do a Big Book Summer giveaway um, for everyone who officially participated that's signed up in some way, either on my blog or in the Goodreads group. If you participated, you'll be um, eligible for that Big Book Summer giveaway at the end of the summer, and some lucky person will win a gift certificate to Bookshop. That's a oh, fabulous book bookstore online where um, you can buy any kind of books and helps to support independent bookstores, either one of your choosing or just indies in general. You can also help to spread the word on social media just by using hashtag Big Book Summer. So, are you interested to hear what I'm going to read this summer? So, as a little background, I always choose a huge stack of big books. That's just the way I like to do it. You don't have to do it that way. 
as I said, I had more than enough big books just waiting on my bookshelves. Um, I've got an entire bookcase of to be read books. So easy, you know, it took me about five minutes to get this huge stack here. So I will just quickly go through them, give you an idea of what I'm reading this summer. Um, I always like to include a classic, a big book classic during the summer. For this year, I have chosen The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. I read this, I think in ninth grade, which was a very long time ago. <laughs> I remember enjoying it. I know lots of other people have enjoyed it. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about it, so I'm really looking forward to this reread. Other, if you would also like to read a big book classic this summer, other um, classics that are big books that I've read in pre previous summers include um, Gone with the Wind as a modern classic. Um, last summer I read, uh, two summers ago, I read Anna Karenina. Last summer I read The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, Dickens is always good for a big book. Uh, a couple summers ago I read David Copperfield took me a whole month during the summer, but I really enjoyed it. Um, Dickens is one of my favorite uh, authors. If you're looking for a smaller big book classic, then um, I highly recommend Great Expectations by Dickens. Um, not too large. This one also is, is only about 400 pages. And um, Great Expectations also happens to be my favorite Dickens. Okay, the rest of these are all more modern books. So I've got Burn by Nevada Barr. I love Nevada Barr's mystery series because I love the outdoors and all of her books take place in national parks. And the main character is Anna Pigeon, who is a national park ranger. So love those. Now this one, my husband read a few years ago. He also participates in Big Book Summer. Um, this one is going to be extra special for me. It's always fun to read one of these books that takes place in a park that we've been to. Well, this one is set in New Orleans, which has a national historical park. And we used to live in New Orleans still absolutely love the city and everything about it. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Also only slightly over 400 pages of 470. So, um, and I know that they're very fast paced. I've got Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr, which I have been dying to read. I got this for Christmas this year, saved it for Big Book Summer. Um, it was a National Book Award finalist and I loved All the Light We Cannot See. I've also heard this book compared to Cloud Atlas, which I really loved by David Mitchell. Another big book. Um, I think I read that in Big Book Summer 2016. I only re remember the date because I remember reading Cloud Atlas on vacation in South Dakota. Um, I love when you associate a time and a place with a book that you've read. So anyway, very much looking forward to this. I have Afterland by Lauren Bukes, Bukes? Not sure how to say her name. Um, I gave this one to my husband, maybe Easter last year, and he enjoyed it. We both enjoyed The Shining Girls by this author. Um, very creepy novel about a time traveling serial killer. Right? I mean, what could be creepier than that? This one is dystopian. Um, it's about a world where men are nearly extinct and a woman is on the run with her 12 year old son because there are so many demands on him. People are preying on him as a reproductive source Yee. or as a stand in son because there are so few boys left. Um, my husband said it was good, and like I said, loved The Shining Girls, so looking forward to that. Another dystopian novel, but this one's YA, Scythe by ne Neil Shusterman. Um, this was a Prince Honor book. I love Neil Shusterman's 
writing. Um, his middle grade books, his YA books, my family and I have read almost all of them. Um, my son got into them and then my husband and I did as well. All three of us read the Unwind series. Fabulous. Highly recommend that. And people have been talking about how fabulous this trilogy is for several years, ever since it came out. I can't believe I've gone this long without reading it. So um, I had asked for it for Mother's Day and I can't wait to dive into this. Next one is a leftover from Big Book Summer 2022 because it is a really hefty one. Voyager by Diana Gabaldon. I loved Outlander. I loved book two, Dragonfly in Amber. This is the third book in her series. Um, as you can see, <laughs> this is the biggest of my big books for this year and the reason why I didn't get to it last year. This large format version with very large pages is 870 pages. So I'm sure the smaller format versions are over a thousand. Um, but I know from experience that I love her books. I am very curious to see what's going to happen next. And um, so I am determined to get to this one this summer. It will probably take me a full month, but <laughs> I'm up for that. This one was another Christmas gift this year that I've been saving. The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. Um, I loved A Gentleman in Moscow. Um, a few years ago when I read it, it was tied for my number one book of the year. Absolutely loved it. And I've heard wonderful things about this. Besides the fact that I liked another book by the author, this is a road trip book, which I love. Um, this one I am going to do as a buddy read with Nikki from Red Dot Reads. She and I both have copies. We've both been saving it for Big Book Summer. So I'm not sure which month we're going to read it yet, but I will let you know in case you want to buddy read with us. The last two on my very large stack are books that I actually gave my husband as gifts. Um, he loved them and now I would like to read them as well. Never by Ken Follett. I think this one just came out last year. I probably gave it to my husband for his birthday last October. This is kind of a modern day thriller and something of a cautionary tale I have heard. Um, my husband said it was really pretty frightening because it's sort of based on things that are really going on in the world today. Um, since I started Big Book Summer with a Ken Follett book, The Pillars of the Earth, this seems very appropriate. This is a big one. It's over 800 pages, so, um, but I am hoping to read it this summer. And finally, it wouldn't be big book summer without a Stephen King book. Most of his books are big books, um, but they also tend to be very fast paced. And if you think that Stephen King only writes horror, that's not true. This is actually a thriller about a hitman who would like to retire, but has one last job to do. Um, again, I gave it to my husband as a gift last year. He loved it. We both love Stephen King. Um, he just, he writes in such a, a compelling way. So no matter how big his books are, they usually go pretty fast. And this one's actually only about 500 pages. Um, so this is not horror, it's thriller. But if even that's too much for you, I highly recommend 11, 22, 63 by Stephen King. It is mainly historical fiction with a little touch of time travel in it. A man in modern day time travels back to 1963 and decides he's going to try to stop um, Kennedy from being assassinated. He thinks if he can do that, it will change the trajectory of the future. So, um, it's mostly historical fiction set back in the 60s. Outstanding. Again, Stephen King is just so good at creating characters, creating scenes. Um, so that one's excellent. Last summer, 
I read Hearts in Atlantis by Stephen King, which is two novellas and three short stories, but that are interconnected and share some of the same characters. Um, so it kind it's kind of like a novel, kind of like a short story collection, some mix of those. Also not horror and also excellent. So that is my stack. <laughs> I know it's way too big, um, but this is what I like. This is how I like to do big book summer. You can do it your own way. I like to pick a stack out. This is probably more than I can get to. I will also throughout the summer um, be listening to big books on audio. I've been saving a Louise Penny for this occasion. Um, I'm not sure what else I have. I'll have to look through my audio backlist and, and choose some others. But you do you. Do big book summer however you like, whether that's one big book or a whole stack like me or somewhere in between. So that's it. Easy going, simple. Now go and check your shelves, look through your TBR list, see if there are some big books that you've been meaning to read and join the fun this summer.